What's up, MMA fans? Today we are catching up with Marcos Almeida, Buchecha, heavyweight fighter from one championship. How are you, my friend? Good, good. Hello, Alonso. Hello, Alonso. Hello, everyone. Always good to be here, to be back. Yeah, tell us how was, how did you feel about that second fight, comparing it to the first one? Uh, you look at more relaxed at that time. Yeah, that that was exactly like that. Uh, the second one, I feel I felt more relaxed. Being honest, like way more relaxed than I'm I'm expected. So it was good because I could really do everything that I trained for. So I didn't rush anything. I didn't do any mistakes. Of course, has a lot of to improve, but. I feel like it's going for the right way. I don't feel as nervous as I used I used to be for the World Championship final of the open weight. So it's it's good. That's great, yeah. What about your your fighting your your sparring routine in American top team? What have changed since you arrived in in ATT as a white belt of MMA? Conan told me yesterday you are not a white belt anymore. You train very well with the top heavyweights of the academy yeah like I'm, i'm 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 really i feel really blessed and really lucky to be to be there at att and to have the coaches that I have around me uh leo cona uh, catel steve moco diego lacerda so that's our my main coaches and since i got there they they did like a schedule for me and i'm following it and it's been really good of course i did some changes along along the, the way along the year but now i i got the perfect schedule it's really it's really working uh, working really well for me so i'm doing the same thing in a camp when i have a fight and off off camp when i don't have anything i do the same thing so i just change the intensity when i have a fight coming up So I keep the same thing, keep the same schedule. So it's not too much on my head, too much on my body. So it's I, I feel it's been great like that. Uh, uh your partner Marcelo Gomi, uh, he's fighting Bellator today, and he used to fight in UFC. In UFC, he fought uh, Ajan Bula, which is the Canadian, the current heavyweight champion of one championship. Have you talked about? This guy who, who probably can be your next or next future opponent once he's a current heavyweight champion of one championship. Yeah, actually, I talk a lot with Marcelo, with Pezão, with Said about like the opponents, the previous opponents that they they had in their careers, and of course we spoke about about Arjun before, but just like everyone else that they fought. And, but not because of that, because he has the belt, because in my opinion, once the time comes for me to fight the belt, I think who's going to hold the belt is not going to be Arjun anymore because heavyweight division, nobody keeps the belt for that long. And I'm not planning to fight for the belt in one or two fights. I think I have like a lot to improve, a lot to come, a lot, a lot of experience, experience to, to get. So that's why it's not going to be in one or two fights that I'm planning to fight for the belt. So by the time, I think somebody else will have the belt. And so that's why I don't worry too much about one name. Of course, I'm thinking about all the names because everyone could 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 be a potential belt holder. You know what I mean? I see. Yeah. Bushishi, you train already in AKA. And today you're training American Top Team, uh, two of the biggest academies, uh, MMA academies in the world. What are the difference between both teams when we talk about uh, sparring and training routines? Uh, like you said, it's like both like one of the biggest, two of the biggest, is I, I, I mean. And... Of course, when I was going to AKA, I was going more there to train wrestling with the guys, to train grappling. So I didn't do any sparring. Just like one day, kind of like Joe, like playing with DC, but wasn't even like a sparring session. Was just like 
I was with the glove on and he he started like messing with me. So it was kind of like one thing, but not really like train like a sparring session. So once I got in ATT, I started training like a like like a real fighter because I want to fight MMA. So it was different because of that. At that. But it was great to to train with everyone at AKA too. But now I'm feeling like really blessed to to be around, um, to be training at ATT, to be around so many good people. And, and talking about training with good people, you live it with Antonio Carlos Cara de Sapato in the same apartment. So you follow his life in the most difficult and the best moment of his life. When he was, uh, when he lost his job in UFC after uh, two consecutive defeats, and then he got depressed and everything, and he got uh, some some injuries, and he got the contract with PFL, won four fights straight, and got one million dollars. How? What have you learned from that experience of living with Karen Zapato during this this whole time? Yeah, it was like a life lesson because like it was like a, it was like a overcoming lesson too because he was like so low after when he got he got fired so he got cut from the UFC he was like really like in his lowest of his life and but he's a warrior and he has like the mindset of a champion he didn't he didn't let it keep him down and he he got better then he decided to to work with ali then he signed up with pfl once he signed up with pfl his spirit changed because he knew that was the chance of his life to make something great and because of the way that he is like a nice guy don't talk crap about anyone was it was being hard to get like good opportunities in the ufc because the way that they do nowadays and in pfl you can be like, you know what I mean? You can say anything. You can be like, not even talk and you can get $1 million. And for him was like, was like about deserved, right? So he, he got his fight, he wins and nobody can say anything. He's the winner, he's the, the champion and he got the, the prize money. That was something that would really like bring it, attention bring like focus to anyone but for him it wasn't just about the money it was about the belt to be world champion and he did it so for me to be with him uh, i did like five camps the whole year i did like five camps because he did five fights right actually i did six because he didn't do the last one with me so it was so much learning because it was something that every camp to to see like a, how a professional fighter really do not just him everyone else but him every day like living with him like diet resting so i could see not just the, the training on the mat but everything off the mat as well and it was great so it was like a lot of lesson like i like i said it was like a like a life lesson for me some lessons not just one to finish, Bushesh, uh, next year we're going to have uh, another edition of a DCC. You were, you were champion of two editions. You also got uh, 13 world titles. And everybody is expecting to see Gordon Ryan and André Galvão. You know very well both guys. This is going to be the super fight. They have uh, some, some problems. They are also hired by 1FC, the same event you're fighting for. Uh, what do you expect for that fight once you're already facing Gordon Ryan? Yeah, like you said, it's supposed to be the ADCC, but in my, I don't see that happening in the ADCC. I don't know why. I, uh, I think it will happen in one championship. Some the in because. You know, in a big fight like that, it's too easy for somebody like pull out and get hurt or something happened. So I think we will happen before of like September in one. That's how I see it happening. But let's say if it happens in ADCC, I think who gets the better chance to win? 
is Galvão because uh, Galvão has a better wrestling and he knows like really well the rules. Of course, Gordon is a great athlete, but I think for for him to put uh, to to play his best game, that his guard game, he needs to be on the ground, right? So if you're not allowed it to pull, you have to take the opponent down, and so you need to have like a good wrestling, and you have ways to pull guard without like taking people down and. But Andrea, it's like a really like, for my opinion, is the best one that ever did in no gear, right? He has like the most titles in in ADCC, so that's for a reason, of course. So he knows the rule, he he knows how to play the game. So I think he's not gonna do mistakes like I did to let like uh, Gordon pull guard, right, without taking him down. So that's why I see. A bigger, like a big advantage for for Andre in the, the aspect. Just to finish, Bushisha, when you plan to return to to one FC? Uh, because, like I said, I did like I did like six camps in a row since like when I went to ATT like July last year. So now it's gonna be the first time they're gonna have like a rest. Like we are going to Brazil and I'm pretty, I intend to stay uh, a couple of weeks there, vacation. So once I get back, I want to train, but not just do a camp. I want to train to get better because now I know it's going to get like harder and harder my fight. So, and so up around uh, March, April, I hope I can be fighting again. Thanks a lot, Bushet, for the interview. Thank you guys, thank you guys. Always a pleasure to be here with you. Oh.